Hey guys, it's Laptop Laura, and this is Copy That Pops. Writing tips and psychology hacks applied to online biz success. Whoa, oh, oh, here we go. Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. This episode, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of behind the scenes Q&A from some incredible entrepreneurs who have been working on or thinking about books, but maybe got stuck along the way. And we jumped on a free Zoom call that was also co-hosted by a dear friend of mine, Allison Melody, that if you've been a longtime listener of the show, then you remember hearing about her and her book launch in December of 2019 with the Food Heals book. She's also the host of the Food Heals podcast, which is a huge, incredible podcast. So she is a big time podcaster, international speaker, now best selling international author, and entrepreneur, wellness empire builder, incredible amazing person. She's also plant-based and we met right after I went plant-based. So like vegan, I think we met like three weeks after I went plant-based and she also was that. And we met on the podcast cruise. And so we sat by each other at dinner and ordered special stuff off the, like the secret menu all the time and just really connected. And we've been good buddies ever since. And so we decided to team up and offer Oh, a couple of things. So we've been doing a couple of free Zoom calls and maybe doing another one this week. If you're listening to this right around when it's going out in May of 2020, but we also are teaming up to launch a 14 week group program where we go from overwhelm to number one bestselling published author on Amazon and also getting your book inside of Barnes and Noble systems so that you can do book signings when it is safe to do so. And so we're offering it at a really killer deal because you get group private coaching from both of us for 14 weeks. And we walk you through all the steps. You get access to all my online course program with my bestselling book accelerator. We're going to do hot seats and live Q and A's and co-working sessions, accountability buddies, and all this amazing stuff. You're going to have an action plan of exactly what to do step by step. And you're going to have a built-in launch team because we're all going to support each other as we go live with our books. And so that 14-week program, it is $597, which I think is a really good deal for basically almost four months of support. And you can also break it up into four payments of $175 if you want to break it out. And if you go to copythatpops.com forward slash 14 weeks, so the number one, number four, and then weeks, copythatpops.com forward slash one, four weeks, then you can see more information and purchase to save your spot. We'll be starting on Monday, May 25th, and it'll run through Friday, August 28th. So by the end of August, you will have a best-selling published book and be ready to go and do book signings in Barnes & Noble if you desire once it's safe to do so after all the quarantine. So basically, if you've had a book on your mind and in your heart (laughs) and you maybe gotten stuck or maybe even done a book before, but you want to do another one and you love the energy of working with others in a group environment, which I absolutely do. I feel so much more motivated when I'm not just working alone in my own little silo. Then check it out. We would love to have you and feel free to ping me if you've got questions as well. And an approximate 14 week schedule. So there's going to be flexibility built in depending on where you are in the process when you jump in with us and the speed that you work. Some people are really fast and some people need a little bit more time. But approximately, we're going to take about six, the first six weeks to go from no idea to polished and formatted book ready for Amazon Kindle and also Amazon print on demand. And then the next four weeks will be all about cover design contests and how to start using that as pre-marketing to get your book known and get people involved and not feel like a sleazy salesman when it comes out live. And then also the best-selling Kindle book launch, and it's going to be self-published. We're going to teach you everything. So you're going to have full royalties and copyrights and decision-making everything. And then the last four weeks approximately will be about the print book launch, how to get official ISBNs and get your book into Barnes and Noble so that you can do book signings. So lots of really fun, amazing stuff. So I encourage you to check that out at copythatpops.com forward slash 14 weeks. But for this episode, it is a decently long one. Oh, baby E just got up from a nap. So we, you're going to hear from 
six different entrepreneurs named in this order, Tamar, Larry, Nancy, Christopher, and Hazel. And we just have a really good open discussion with Allison and myself leading off, answering questions, talking about imposter syndrome and sharing vulnerable stories and how to get past limiting beliefs and blocks and how to pick the topic of which book to write first. So lots of really great stuff. I encourage you to listen to this full episode and ping us if you have any questions. We would love to hear from you. All right, let's jump into this episode where you're going to hear from a bunch of great entrepreneurs who are working on books. Welcome, everyone. So good to see you. Thank you for being here. And um, I'm really excited because Laura and I have been, you know, talking about doing this for a while and it's finally here. So we want to help everyone who wants to write their first book or for some of you, um, your second, third or fourth book, whatever it is. Laura helped me write my book in 2019 and it took us about a year, but that's because of me, not because of her, because you guys know, if you know Laura, she helps authors write books in like a couple of weeks. Right. And so she's helped authors do it in 30 days, you know, and we're working on a 14 week program. So I'm really excited for that. So what I wanted to do really was just hang out with you guys, find out what your questions about books are. But before we get into questions, just like Laura, tell everyone a little bit about you and who you are and why you're so passionate about writing and becoming all of us becoming best-selling authors. Sure. Yeah. I think everyone so far in the group knows me, but I'll say it just for people in the replay and when we put it on the podcast too. But my background is being a teacher and actually Nancy on this call knows that for sure. She is a an incredible, amazing teacher that is like decorated with awards. Like I bow down to her as a teacher, <laughs> but I also used to be a teacher in Chandler, Arizona area. And I loved it, but it was still too inside the box for me because I wanted to be able to live anywhere in the world that I could because I love traveling and, and, uh, yeah. So, so I feel like I'm still a teacher, but just in a different way now online. And I did a bunch of different things in, in terms of business, but at the end of 2016, I had, so I had started a podcast in April of 2016 called copy that pops. So all like writing tips and psychology hacks for business online with all different topics, not just not books at all, actually at that time. And then at the end of the year, I was kind of feeling invisible and not taken seriously as an expert when I was at networking events and things. And I just kind of felt frustrated. And I had three people all in one week, three people I really respected all in one week say, well, why don't you write a book to really stand out and and show like, I'm serious about being seen as an expert in this niche. And I was like, oh, I guess I never really thought about a book. Or if I did, it was kind of like, oh, that's what you do at like the end of your career only looking back, or you have to be like selected by a fancy publisher. Like you're not, you're not allowed to do that on your own kind of thing in air quotes allowed. And they're like, no, like self-publishing is so much more accessible than it ever has been before. And the taboo about self-publishing used to be kind of looked down upon that is slowly going away. And even now traditional publishing, the deals just are not as amazing as they used to be. And I feel like that industry is really dying. And I was like, yeah, I mean, where I am now, I am actually, sorry for any crying in the background. (laughs) I got baby Eve getting some food. My husband's feeding him. Um, But so where I am now in my knowledge and in career in whatever field I could write a book about, I I'm actually better equipped to help someone a few steps behind me. So let's say I'm at like level three or four out of 10 in my profession. I'm actually better able to help someone at zero or one because it's been a lesser distance of time since I've been where they are versus someone maybe who is at a 10. They are so far removed. They're not familiar with like the technology and the the aspects or even the psychological, emotional feelings of what it's like to be in that starter position. So I'm actually in a very good spot to be able to write a book. I don't have to wait until like, you know, millions of years into the future. So my mind frame shifts around it uh, for that. And I decided to write my first book and I did it in 30 days. Um, 
And I also figured out how to launch it on Amazon and hit number one in a relevant category. And it was just so fun and exciting. I made mistakes and I owned up to it and I did Facebook lives and I shared things that I messed up on. And people were like, thank you so much for sharing that and being vulnerable. So it was just a really great experience. And after that, people started saying, Hey, help me do the same thing too. So in my business, it kind of shifted to helping people with books and So since the beginning of 2017, that's the thing I've focused on in terms of clients and courses and things like that. It's helping others to write and self-publish books and use them to grow their brand and business even more. Yeah. And it's such instant credibility to say you have a book because like, okay, I met Laura. We were on this cruise. It was the podcast cruise of what year was that? Like 2015 maybe? Was it? No, no, no. Because I I already had a podcast. It must have been early 2017. Was it right around... Okay. I don't remember. I started helping people with book or 2018. I forget too. But you were like, okay, so Laura had a podcast. I had a podcast. We were both plant-based. So we were sitting at the same table so we could eat the same food. We had all this stuff in common, but Laura had a book. So I was like, oh, this girl's like next level, you know? So it's like, it is an an instant credibility to have a book and to elevate yourself when you're meeting new people and when you're networking and it can lead to some amazing things like speaking gigs on stages and all kinds of paid opportunities that you don't have before you're an author. And so I just think like the credibility part of it alone is amazing and getting your story on paper, getting what you are best at, what you are most passionate about, what you care about the most, getting it on paper is like the best way to reach people. Um, I think for me, what I've learned from podcasting is that I could reach a lot of people and that was really exciting. But then I still had a lot of people, especially I'm from the South and they don't all listen to podcasts. They're like, oh, Allie's doing this podcast thing in California. Then I wrote a book and they're like, Ali wrote a book. Like they understand that they can get behind that. Right. And so it's just interesting that it's just another avenue. I think that you can reach people with your media, with your message, with what you're passionate about. Um, informing, educating, inspiring people in all different kinds of ways. So I just think it's really cool. So um, I would love to find out who's here, what you're up to, what your questions are. If you have a book, if you have a book in mind, what's going on? Just unmute yourself and introduce yourself and tell us about your book plans. Or I will call on you. (laughs) Okay, I'll start with Tamar. (laughs) Hey everyone, I'm Tamar and this is my first book. Um, I like to start things really early. So of course I've been writing away and uh, the first time we met, uh, Laura had suggested, you know, wake up in the morning early and just start writing. So I've been doing that every day and I'm writing a book about my story and trying to get really vulnerable into some situations that have affected my life, but also affected how I can help others in the future. And so it's interesting. Uh, I've, I've written about four chapters now and just bringing up all this stuff that I was kind of afraid because of my ego to dig into has really helped me look today going, wow, okay, I really have changed, right? I'm a completely different person today. So, so far, um, I know we haven't officially started yet, but it's been really exciting and it's been interesting what I'm learning about myself. So it's, you know, for me, just question wise, I'm trying to Um, come up with my title. I wrote down a whole bunch of ideas that I've been kind of thinking about. I just haven't, nothing I'm loving right now. So I think that's kind of what I'm trying to dig into and I'll take my time. I'm not gonna, you know, I like everything right now, but um, yeah, I just making sure I get lessons behind every story is what I'm working on right now. So Yeah. So yours is kind of like a memoir with lessons at the end of each chapter, which is kind of my favorite self-help type of book to read because you like, you get to, it really understands. I love stories. I love reading about other people's experiences and stories and things that you can relate to. And then you get a lesson out of each one. So I think that's such a fantastic model to start. Yeah. And for context too, Tamar is, has already jumped into our 14 week group program that's starting on May 25th. So that's why she she said it hasn't even started yet. That's I think she was referring to. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Do you want to share one title idea that maybe is at the top, but you're still massaging? I really want the word hope to be in there. Um, because like I mentioned, it's, um, what was it? Uh, I can't remember what my subtitle was now, <clears throat> but it was really, um, oh, living through pain, gaining acceptance and finding hope. 
And I would just love for that hope title. So I kind of like hope brings or hope through acceptance. I'm not sure. Nothing's really popping right now. Hope in rises. Terms of, yeah, something like that. Hope. What about finding, finding hope? hope? Finding hope. That, like finding hope could be the title, and then the subtitle could elaborate on who the book is for or whom the book is for <laughs> and for whom the book is written. Actually, it's probably better. And, um, and maybe the transformation that they'll get from reading it. Right. Right. Acceptance is another key word in there too, because that was a big part of what I had to do. So it's um, yeah, but finding hope that's, that's something I'll, I'll sleep on. Yeah. And we'll definitely help you brainstorm in the Facebook group. So For those of you listening or watching, um, Laura and I have a 14-week to bestseller launch program. It starts in about a week and a half, I believe. Tamar is our star student. Woohoo! But if anyone else wants to join, we will be sharing details about how you can join us. Um, Does anyone else want to share or ask any questions? Larry, unmute yourself. Ta-da! What's happening, everybody? My name is Larry Roberts, and I... Uh, no, Laura, I've known her now for what, maybe two years, maybe two years. I met Allison back in March at Podfest. We were eating lunch and I, I realized she was sitting there and I'd seen her a couple of times and I knew that she had a book from Laura. So I wanted to meet her and I eventually just leaned over, turned around. I was like, Hey, hello, uh, my name is Larry and introduced myself. And it was kind of awkward. I'm not going to lie. Cause I don't like interrupting people's lunches. You know, they're, they're chowing down on their salad and here I am, you know, they got a mouth of cauliflower and I'm talking <laughs> to, talk to them. So it's not working out very well, you know? <laughs> But anyways, I got to meet Allison there, and that was great. And just for the record, this is going to be my second book. Uh, I'm 110% in on the group. I will be be participating. I will be writing a second book. So my first book here was called One Plus One Equals Podcast, where I simplify the equation of podcasting success. And uh, Laura, with Laura's help, it went to number one. And get this, I wrote it in like 20 days. Wow. Because I started writing the book, and... Uh, you know, I'm, I was a recovered, I am still a recovered alcoholic and I was starting to get emotional when writing the book, not like crying, but I mean, I was getting into my story and I'm like, this has nothing to do with podcasting. So 10 days in, I had to just trash it, man, and start over and get right back to the basics and talk about what my topic was. And I still managed to get it knocked out. Thanks to Laura and all her help. I mean, she gave bonus calls the whole nine yards when I'm sitting here messing with Scrivener, which I'm not using. <laughs> but anyways, you know, I'm not a big I'm fan. I'm starting of to but. have some oh, mixed see? emotions about hey, Scrivener. Hey, yeah, actually, so. like with Allie's book, because I, I did all the formatting and editing for Allie. She was a private client, so I did like every like all the hands-on stuff in the back end. And there are a couple of things that I went back and forth with tech support and still haven't resolved, and I'm really mad at them. I don't wow. know. So that wow. could be a whole other podcast, but... Well, something cool that's going to happen here is, in, 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 as well as being a part of the group, and I'm very excited about that, and I appreciate Laura telling me about it, and Allison, you as well, uh, is that I'm going to bring my wife in on the gig, too. She's going to come on the journey with me. Nice. And we just established a topic just five minutes ago. You know, I was, part- I was participating in a, an online conference a little while ago, and I didn't think I was even going to make it here, but I had some downtime, so I ran in there to say hi and all that good kind of stuff. And she goes, you know what? I was thinking... I was thinking you, 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 you're wanting to launch a VA business. Why don't you write about how to be a VA or how to start a VA business? And since I didn't have a topic and it's something she was interested in as well, boom, there's our topic. We're going to write a book about how to find and how to be a VA. And uh, hopefully that's going to work out well for us. I'm pretty excited about that. So needed right now. So many people can benefit from that, especially with all the changes in everyone's businesses going on right now. So I think that's such a good and timely topic. Um, But I do have a question for you, Larry. What about writing about, you said you were writing in your other book and you're making yourself cry. Are you going to tell that story as well? No, uh, you know, I, I would love to write. A, here's my thing. And that's how Readily Random started. This is my, this was my second show and it's my you know, my, my, my permanent show, but my first show was very comedic driven and not exactly clean, you know, it was along the lines of Andrew Dice Clay and mm-hmm. those kind of guys. And, um, you know, it did all right, but it really wasn't fulfilling a, a, a need or whatever. And wasn't being too well received by some of my coworkers at the time. <laughs> so my boss, um, but so I had to kill that one. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to start a show and I'm going to give back. And I'm going to start telling these stories and I'm going to share my story. And that's how it started. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was hosting uh, the show with 
with recovered addicts, whether it be a drug addict or alcoholic or just anybody that had had a struggle, whether maybe they went to prison, it doesn't matter whatever it was. Uh, I would bring them on the show and we would share our stories back and forth, but it got redundant. And I don't want to be redundant. I don't want to tell the story that everybody's heard. You know, it's not like I'm the first recovered alcoholic. You know, I mean, there's been a ton of people that have done it. Uh, it took me a little bit extra, you know, almost checked out and ended up in the spittle for, for three or four days before I even got to the rehab facility. And then I was in their little in-care hospital for a week and a half before I went to the real facility. I mean, I, t- I tried to check out, but I, I failed, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my, the, the story, it's just everybody's heard the I was an alcoholic and now I've recovered story. And I haven't, even though I know my story is unique in that it's mine and it's, it's nobody else has my story. It's still the same old thing, you know, and I don't know how I could be inspiring. I mean, I give bits and pieces of it for, for uh, inspirational feedback with folks, but telling the story, I don't see how I could, at this point, I don't know how I could garner the interest for somebody to go from start to finish uh, uh, on Larry's story. You know, um, it, it's just, there's a lot to it, but I don't know that it would work very well at this point for a number one, you know, best selling book. And considering that I'm pushing the podcast these days, uh, you know, I've had the podcast for a couple of years now and it's doing well. My speaking gigs are taking off. The VA thing is going to take off for my wife. Uh, that just seems to fit better now than going down a, an emotional route that I've actually gotten kind of away from. I still see my therapist once about every eight months just so that he can renew my meds. But, uh, you know, it's <laughs> But uh, other than that, you know, I've, I've put it away for now, you know, and mm-hmm. um, I used to try to get depressed and try to kind of hold on to it. You know, I'd turn on my Pink Floyd and I'd have my, 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 my tunes that made me feel all sad inside and I'd just cry and my <laughs> mom would get mad and she'd say, turn off the Pink Floyd. And it just, that was, I probably would have written it during those times. But now that I've wrapped that all up and kind of put it in on a, put a nice little bow on it, I don't know that I want to let it back out right now. Okay. Well, I totally respect your decision and you got to do what's right for you. Um, I think the VA book is absolutely, you know, I'm sure it's a no brainer for Laura to advise on how to make it a bestseller. I would just also say that if you are ready, I think that, you know, in the future, I think that that is a story worth sharing. And I think every time we share our overcoming anything story that if it, there's one person that we can help then it's worth it. So just That's something true. to keep in the back of your mind, because I'm inspired by your story, you know, so I, I, and I think for me, it's the same thing. Like I was like, do, does anyone, does everyone want to hear another food healed my body story? They do. That's why I still have a show, you know? So <laughs> maybe you ought to something there, you know, yeah. food is what I actually, I replaced food. I mean, alcohol essentially with food, uh-huh. meats, especially I, I hate savory foods even today. And it's been uh, six and a half years. Mm-hmm. I still hate savory foods. I just want sweets. <laughs> I used to weigh a buck, 155 pounds, a buck 55. And now well, we're going to talk about how much I weigh, but it's a lot more than 155. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 diff- it's a difficult path. And I could take your book probably and garner a lot of knowledge out of that book alone. So uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Let's get with me in a copy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome, Larry. Thank you for sharing. Yes, thank, thank you. you. All right. I see Hazel has entered. Hello, Hazel. Hi, I'm struggling to get my camera on. Apologies for the for the picture. No problem. Um, I'm going to keep working on it. I had a bit of tech problems, but hi, it's great to be here. I finally managed to join. All right, we're glad to have you. So we're just going through and seeing how everyone's doing, what their future books are. So we'll let you get your camera straightened out and maybe sure, sure. Christopher or Nancy, would you like to share? I'll go ahead and share. Um, I haven't I haven't written a book yet. I have two books in me. Um, the first one is kind of um, a, a mood point right now with uh, uh, COVID-19, but um, it was going to be, I wrote about three quarters of it and I had a very hard time with it. It was about classroom management and what um, I've found out in my 33 years of teaching in the classroom and how to get kids on your side and stuff like that, which is, it, it might or might not be moot, but I found myself going through it and it got harder and harder and harder for me to write because I was um, struggling 
because I had another book inside me I really wanted to write. And I kept saying to myself, well, just get that first one done. And then you could write the second one. Just get that one done. And then you could write the one you really wanted to write. And one day I realized why just write the one you want to write now and put that other one aside. And, um, on my off time, I, I work, I work at conferences. That's my part-time job. And I was at a, um, a literacy conference about a year ago, which of course is canceled this year. And I was talking one of the, to one of the vendors and I said, I'm going to write a book. And next year at this time, you're going to be able to see it. I'm going to bring a copy to you. And he said, what's it about? And I was explaining how, when I teach, I tell stories about my life and how this book is just going to be my stories. And so we talked about it and I, he says, what's the title? And I said, Coca-Cola Hot Pants, Cancer and Other Stories of Good Fortune. And he said, what? <laughs> he said, how can you put cancer with Coca-Cola Hot Pants? And I said, well, and I explained it to him how when I was a kid, you know, I was about 12. Um, it was in the 70s, how I wanted Coca-Cola hot pants. My parents said no, but I managed to get some anyway. Uh, actually, I, I entered a contest, but I didn't enter it. I entered my grandmother, who did not speak English, and she won them and gave them to me. Um, and my whole life has been like that. You know, I, I got stuck in an elevator once for about two hours with this gentleman who I had no idea who he was. But I, again, I was a teenager. He got me very calmed down and was absolutely hysterical. He told me his name was Paul. He was an older gentleman. Later found out it was Paul Harvey. Now, what are the odds, right? And things like that happened my whole life. Laura knows I got to fly on a zero-G flight, the Vomit Comet. But what Laura doesn't know is I got to fly on it twice. And the last time I got to fly on it, serendipitously, I flew with Mark Kelly, the astronaut that spent a year in orbit. Wow. Again, what are the odds? Um, and, and I should be very angry because three years ago, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in December. And before I could catch my breath from there, that I found out I had um, breast cancer. And before I could have surgery or anything for that, I found out I had breast cancer in my other breast, a totally different kind. And while we were going through all that, and I thought it was fine, my oncologist told me, I want you to think of this like a chronic illness because it'll come back. And so people always ask me, how can you be so positive? How can you be so upbeat? How can you be so joyful? And so that's what the book is. I don't want this one to focus on the cancer. Yes, there are cancer books all over the place, and maybe I'll write a cancer book, or maybe I'll write a Parkinson's book. But I want this one to be the good stuff, the happy stuff, the, the serendipity, you know, the, the joyful stuff. How many people got to play baseball with Nolan Ryan? And he gave them his jersey after the game. Oh, yeah, me. Right. And my life has been full of that. So that's what I want the first book to be, because I begrudged that sec, that first book so much, that teacher book. I kept saying, I hate this. I don't want to write this, but get it done so I can write my book that I want to write. Write the book that I want to write. And interestingly enough, with the um, COVID, since I was home, teachers are asking kids to do all kinds of stuff. Well, I noticed one of the high school English teachers Ask the kids to write their life story in six words. That was kind of interesting, right? But what my book is going to be is every story, every sentence in the whole book is written in six words. And it looks like poetry. Oh, wow. Isn't that kind of a cool way of looking at it? So it's totally that. different. And, and it's really interesting because the Paul Harvey thing ends with a sentence for the rest of the story. And it's six words. Right. So the whole thing is falling together and it's it's forcing me to be very thoughtful and very creative because I am totally freaking out with being home. Our borders are closed because I'm high risk. I'm still on chemo. My 89 year old mother-in-law, who does not like me, lives here with us, along with my husband. We have oh, not left the house since March 9th. So this, this it looks so pretty, doesn't it? Maybe yes. It's pretty, right? It kind of looks like poetry or something, but it's my story. So I'm loving it. I'm not very far, though. I mean, I think I have like, I don't know, like 30 pages or something done. But that's where I am on it. But I, but I also have um, imposter syndrome. We 
which has been hitting pretty big lately. But school is over. I mean, technically it's over Friday. You know, I'm having shoulder surgery on Thursday, so Thursday and Friday are out, but then it'll be good. So that's where I am. But I need help because I that imposter syndrome kicks in and it hits hard. Mm-hmm. Who wants to hear what I have to say? Right. You know, in terms of education, yeah, people will probably listen to me because I'm I'm decorated and whatever. And I'm going to retire in the next year or two. I mean, this year might be my last year. Who knows? But in terms of everything else, who wants to read about my my stuff? I do. I, I know. Do. I was <laughs> watching you guys when I, I said some things and I saw some faces go, that, that looks like cool. Well, yeah, so. for, first of all, I just want to say 30 pages is so worth celebrating, you know, and um, Tamar says in the comments that she can absolutely relate to this. So let's talk about mm-hmm. imposter syndrome for a second, um, because I think that every person has to overcome this in their lifetime in order to become any type of influential person, whether it is just putting yourself out there on social media, whether it's writing a book, whether it's starting a podcast, whether it's starting a YouTube series and just saying what you think out loud and going, oh, but who wants to hear what little old me has to say? Well, I believe that we are all put here for a purpose. And when we feel that passion when we're writing or sharing or doing something creative. That is what we are meant to be doing in this world. And so if we feel passionately about it, other people are going to be passionately feeling about it too. And they don't care where it comes from. So I always talk about this concept when people are asking, okay, what should I write about? What should I post about? You know, what should I say online to get more followers, get more listeners, to get more readers, all that stuff. I, I say, are you moved by your message? Nancy, you are clearly moved by your message. We could see all of your passion just now. You know, if if your message brings you to tears, if your message makes you feel something, it will move people. It will move the masses and they don't care who the messenger is. And then the fact that it is you for the people who already love you, it's going to make it all that much better. So I just think keep moving yourself with your own message. Keep putting it on paper and there will be so many people that you can help. And when you think about it that way, it's like when you share your story or you teach something, you are helping change someone's life. If you didn't share that, they wouldn't be changed. If Tamar wasn't willing to share her story of overcoming addiction, someone else may not get the help that they need, but because she's willing to share, someone else might go, if she did it, I can do it too. So then when I think about imposter syndrome, I go, it is my responsibility to overcome this because there are people who Laura was talking about earlier. I'm just a few steps ahead. There are people we're just all a few steps ahead of that we can help, that we can serve, that we can educate, inform, inspire to do something different, right? And so that's what I, when I, when I see imposter syndrome creep up for me, that's what I say. I say, well, yeah, people have done this. Yeah, well, who am I? It doesn't matter because there are still people that I can help and that need me. So when I reframe it that way and I go, it's not, it's not about me. It's my responsibility to share this with the world, to help other people. Then I get empowered again to start again. So yeah, that's my, that's my version of overcoming imposter syndrome. And I'm sure if you guys have some tips you want to share too, if Laura has some or anyone else. Yeah. I'll just jump in really fast and add to that. Like um, for me, one of my greatest fears and Nancy, you might find it shocking since I was a teacher for a while, but was public speaking. So to me, teaching in front of a group of kids, I was super nervous in the beginning, but you have student teaching of, you know, practice. And then after a while, you're like, okay, I got this. But it was, even though I never treated it, like I'm the ultimate authority and everyone, like I never came at them, like I'm the leader and you're the followers be quiet. It was very like, collaborative and respect, like mutually respectful sort of feeling, but there were no other adults overseeing me. So I still was like the main adult. I don't know. It was a different dynamic. So when I got into business and started speak, you know, having the possibility to speak in front of my peers, or maybe even people in the audience are further along than I am, man, did imposter syndrome just hit me like a ton of bricks. And like, I did not, I ran away from public speaking for years because I was just terrified. Like I'd physically shake my mouth and go dry. And I was just like, I can't do this. And what finally did it for me, um, was like Allison was saying is I realized that, and even kind of what Tamar was saying too, about the ego, I realized I was so worried about how I was going to be perceived by everybody. Like 
you know, the person that jumps to mind in the podcast world is Pat Flynn. I don't know if everyone knows who he is. Um, he's a big podcaster and an online entrepreneur. And he, to me, was just like the ultimate, like awesome person. And I would, I would think in my head, oh my God, if he's in the audience and I'm speaking, he's going to know I suck and I don't deserve to be there. And he's going to be like, why is she like, obviously he wouldn't say that. He's like the sweetest person ever. But that was my thought. It was like, the other speakers are going to be like, how did she get on stage? She is a loser. This is horrible. You know? So what finally changed it for me was I recognized I was so worried about how I was going to look to everyone else. And that was not the point. The point was, can I help somebody? Can I help multiple people in the audience with the way that I say things, with the stories that I have, even just my energy and my like, even if I mess up and I stumble my words and my slides go crazy, which actually helped happened in Australia. Ali was there and so was Pat Flynn, ironically, in the I audience. Know, I was going to say, this actually all happened. It actually <laughs> happened to me. <laughs> but I had so many people after that come up and say like, you know, you handled that well and you inspired me that like, even if something goes crazy, just keep on going. And it, anyway, so I just, I think that happens with books and with speaking and with teaching and with anything is once we're able to stop worrying about how we looked to everyone else and recognize it's not about us, we're just a messenger and, and how the package shows up does not matter because everyone is going to have a different opinion about it. So like, you're always going to have haters. You're always going to get bad reviews. Who cares? Let them go. If they're so hurting in their life that they feel like they need to leave a bad review or, you know, make a nasty comment on Facebook, actually feel empathy and sadness for them. Not don't take it personally. Like everyone has a different opinion about what is good and what is not. All you can do is put it out there and the right people who need it at that time will find it. And that is what matters. Mic drop, Laura. <laughs> it's so true. And like, we can get thousands of good reviews and people saying, Oh, great job on your book or your podcast. And then you get that one and you're crushed and that's just human nature. And so I just go forgive and delete. Like I get a negative comment. I forgive you. Delete <laughs> off negativity off my page. Um, but that's a really good point, Laura. Um, I want to make sure that we get to everyone. Um, Christopher, would you, would you like to share? Yeah, my um, the area that I'm in is is astronomy and space science. Cool. And what I I have seven themes that I work with, um, and one of the things that I'm I'm struggling with right now is to start doing stuff online because I really can't do it in person. Um, when they started to close everything down, I had, was getting contacts up in the Rochester, New York area because I'm in southern the southern tier part of New York State. And that was, they were hit pretty hard with the virus. Um, so a few weeks later, I contacted them and I said, would you be willing to have an online type of program? I'm still struggling on how I'm going to present this though. Because I'm, I'm used to presenting in front of people. Also, I, I tried to videotape myself and I look and I feel I don't look good when I'm videotaping myself. I know, I know other people have said that. Um, but I have seven themes that I want to work on. And I have a list here. Surfing and rocking around the sun, lunar mysteries, destination Mars, liftoff, which deals just with rockets, exploring space and beyond, cruising the cosmos, and then exoplanets and the search for life elsewhere. And my, my area of interest is Mars and also uh, the search for extraterrestrial life. So those are the two areas that I'm trying to do some research on. Um, I'm also trying, I've connected with a couple different organizations where I can actually take the data and, and search through the data and maybe maybe I can find an exoplanet through that data. I don't know if that'll happen. But these are the seven themes that I would develop into workshops. They probably could be set up as books. I'm not sure you know, what direction to go in. Um, if you have any suggestions, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what to, what to do with that. I love all the topics because I'm fascinated by this stuff. But I would just ask yourself, like, what, which one of all the topics you just named brings you the most excitement? There's three of them. Okay. The Mars one. Well, actually, there's four. Uh, <laughs> lunar Mysteries, because we're going to be going back to the moon. 
and that'll be the jumping point to go to Mars. Destination Mars, lift off because it does, deals with rockets. So kids love rocketry. And then uh, the exoplanets is, is a search for life elsewhere. Um, what I tried to do last year, in fact, the way I met Laura was through the summit, the link, the link, the, the not the LinkedIn, what am I thinking of? Think ethic. Okay, that's how I met, met Laura. Um, but I've gone to a different platform. Uh, I've been searching different platforms. I was searching Google. I've been searching. I went through th uh, Teachable. I think I'm going to try to do things through Podia. Uh, it seems like it's pretty easy to set up my courses. But the first three courses that I wanted to do last year dealt with the, the lunar landing. It, they didn't get off the ground. Um, but I still want to do those. And I want to start with the Apollo 11 landing and then do the, the other landings and then the characteristics of the moon. And then I would jump off from there to do other, other courses. I don't have anything really interesting. I, Scott Kelly was, was someone that was going to be at Chautauqua Institution. I don't know if you're, anybody's familiar with Western New York. Um, how can I explain? I'm an hour south of Buffalo. And about 20 minutes from where I live, I live in Brockton, New York. 20, about 20 minutes from where I live is a place called Chautauqua Institution. And Scott Kelly spoke there last year, but I didn't get a chance to meet him. Um, and I'm really intrigued by what he did on the space station, because that's the other, another area that I'm interested in is the psychological implications of long-term space flight. So I have a lot of different ideas I'm trying to work on, and I'm not sure what to settle on. So... Well, one other thing that my husband and I do when it comes to vacation planning that might help is we put all of the places that we say we want to go on little slips of paper and we put them in a bowl and then we pull it out. We pull out one and we read it. And if either of us are like, oh, we were actually hoping for a different one, then we know then that's the one that we need to do. And if either of us are like, yeah, let's do that one, then we pick that one. And the cool thing is, just like travel, well, not right now with COVID, but hopefully soon, you can go to all the places. You can do all the books. So it's just a matter of which one you do first. And if you debate it for too long, then all of a sudden just time passes by and you still don't have any of them. So it's better just to pick one and get going. And even like Nancy too, you might find you're three fourths of the way through one. And then you're like, no, my gut is telling me it's actually this one. And that's okay. Cause you've now got a start for your next one that you can, you know, put on the back burner for number two. <laughs> so hopefully that's helpful a little bit. Okay. And if you um, want to work with us, and join, if you want to work with us and join the group, um, we can help you with that. So one of the greatest things about the 14-week program that Laura and I are doing is the collaboration. So you would have a lot of people that you could bounce the ideas off of, and we could kind of help you determine um, the path to go on. Now, you would decide for yourself. I'm just saying there's a bunch of people in there that would we would all help one another. Um, so let us know if you're interested in that. And I think it, it's exactly what Laura said. For me, it would be like, I wanted to do food heals, but I had like four other books in me. So instead of, um, I waited like three years, like I should have just been publishing and I would have had three books by now. So I think it's just go with your gut, picking one, going with it. And you might need to pivot halfway through, but that's okay. But picking one, going for it, and then you can write the next one and the next one and the next one, but don't let perfection be the enemy of the good. And I say that to myself as much as I say that to anyone listening or watching. That's true. What is the cost for this, though? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't have it. Laura, do you have it in front of you? Yeah, so it's five ninety seven one time, or you can break it into four months, a one seventy five per month. And then also, if you're already a past client of mine or have gone through another program, we have it crazy, crazy discounted because you've already had access to the online trainings, and we just want to support you with the group part two. So um, for example, Larry has gone through a program with me before, so he's doing the crazy discounted version. So yeah, but um, five ninety seven. Okay. When we send the replay, we will um, send the links where you can join. Or actually maybe Laura, we could pop them in the comments right now with all the information. Yeah. And I, I've made a short link to it too. So copy that pops.com forward slash 14 weeks. So four, one, four W E E K S. I'm putting it in the chat. 
although it's not hyperlinked, let me retype it too. Um, it's got a little bit more information. We're going to have live calls and the group has about 10 or 12 right now. And I'm guessing it, it probably won't get above 20. So, you know, give or take. So I think it's going to be like a good size for like energy and really collaboration, but not so many that, you know, it's not gonna be like a hundred people or something like that you're still going to really get a lot of personalized help from us both. And we're both, Allie and I are both are, are doing it. So you get help from two leaders, not just one. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Well, thank you for sharing Christopher. Thank and you. I look, yeah, I really do look forward to hearing more about all those topics because those are things I don't know a lot about, but I'm fascinated by, and I love sci-fi and everything related to that world. So I look forward to what you put out there. Um, I want to go to Hazel because we haven't gotten to hear from her yet. There's one other thing I want to say. Okay. One of the other areas that I've been trying to do, and, and I had some interest because where I live, I live along Lake Erie. We have like 23 wineries throughout Western New York and uh, Western Pennsylvania. And there's a thing called astronomy on tap where you go into a bar setting and you do presentations, scientific presentations. And I thought, you know, why not do it in wineries? So um, I had a pretty, pretty good interest, but it never got off the ground. So one of the things I was going to do in May, I was going to, um, well, this month I was going to try to do a free program to get it as a reference. But that's something else I'd like to do is to go into the wineries and talk about astronomy and space science. It'd be hands-on. Um, I came across some stuff some artwork that can be done, which I have to learn to do. But it looks like it's pretty simple. Um, and that, that would be something else that I could, could do. Um, because there's also a book written about alcohol in space. And he's the director of Ex um, Explore Mars. Um, and uh, I don't know, I thought, well, if he did that, I mean, there, there has to be an interest. Me and Allie's you know. all up about that right now. I know she's like signing I'm the, up. I'm the resident wino of the group. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the other area that I wanna I wanna present programs at. So once once we can start going to yeah, because right now they're closed to the you know for tastings and that, but. Okay. I love that idea. I'm not big into wine at all. Like even in Italy, I was like, yeah. I don't even care. But. Oh, Christopher, you're, you're muted. I didn't hear you. Oh. What were you saying? You're part Italian. I am actually. Yeah, I am part Italian. Yeah, do you, you saw my post about my great grandma yeah, Lena? Because I, I right. told you that my family, my my dad's father, he came from uh, Agio, Agio Pacenz, about 90 miles east of, of Rome. Uh -huh. And then my, my, on my grandparents' side, they're from Sicily. My, my dad's mom was from Mariano, Eastern Sicily, and then my mom's parents came from around Palermo. Oh, wow. I've never been there, but at some point I'd like to go to visit. Well, Ali runs uh, vegan retreats out there, although is it only for women, your retreats? Well, the, the ones we've done so far, but in the future, we're open. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. You do them in Italy? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. On oh. the Amalfi Coast. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, and I was just saying, I, I'm not a big wino, but I would go to a winery if yeah. I were going to be learning about science while I was doing it. Like, yeah, that, that pairing sounds super fun. I love, yeah. I love the idea. Okay, I better mute. <laughs> I can talk too long. Thank oh, you. no, it's all good. I love how full of ideas you are. I'm the same way, so I totally get it. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk to Hazel. <laughs> Let's see. Well, I, I need I'm to unmute you. you. I'm completely with you on the wine. I'll I'll be in Italy on your vegan retreats as long as there's wine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you look very well for someone who likes wine. <laughs> I do um, a lot of green juice in between the wine. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> Everything's healthy and then a glass of wine. Yeah. Um, right. I, I came into this meeting a bit late. I'm sorry. What would you want a little synopsis of where I'm at? With writing, is that the idea? Yeah, just who you are, what you're, if you have a book or if you're interested in writing a book, where you're at with it, whatever you want. Okay. To. Well, I love copy that pops, been listening for years, so that's good. Um, and nice to see your face uh, finally. Um, right, where am I? I was a model for 30 years. I'm in my 50s now. Um, 
all over the world, you know, did rather well at it, Vogue and all that, all that stuff, New York, Paris, Milan. Um, and I've been writing a book, a fictitious so-called book, but that's ended up as an autobiography. Now I've got a lot of what I would call authentic, unique material. Um, you know, bad things that went on in Milan, backstage stuff, you know, addictions, eating disorders, all, all the stuff you'd imagine to be synonymous uh, with the industry. Um, I also had a very famous boyfriend um, in, in for three years that was a proper relationship that I haven't talked about. He was a big global pop star. So I was backstage rock and roll parties, all, all, of, the, all of the sort of stuff that, you know, people like hopefully would like to hear about but I'm also very happily married with a couple of kids and and not quite sure I want to expose all that stuff I suppose it's a bit of resistance and listening to you earlier about the negativity and the the haters I'm like what can I put out there also I I was always I was never a groupie but you know, I went out with someone mega famous and it was a proper relationship. And that's why for 30 years I've never talked about it because I'm not into selling my story of fame or all of that stuff. But nevertheless, I have been, a, you know, Elton John's inner parties, George Michael, all of that stuff, Queen, you know, all of it, big bands. And I saw a lot. So I've got quite a lot of sensational and non-sensational, quite sort of sad material. And I'm not sure I'm the right person to write it. You know, I've got I've got all the I've got what I feel would be good little vignettes, perhaps as a visual thing, maybe Netflix. I know that sounds like hey, you know, a bit dream on sort of thing, but I'm not sure it's a novel. So we'll have right. Okay, I'll pass it back to you. I that that's my material. You know, maybe you can write it for me. I don't know. I don't know what to do with my material. I've got 30 years of very in, what I feel is authentic unique interesting stuff what do i do with it i'd read it right oh, now me too. Oh, well, I'm a fan, so that's great and it's good to see your face because it's so funny i've listened to you with your baby and and here you are sitting here it's amazing <laughs> it's so cool <laughs> no you look so young <laughs> do i sound yeah. old and mature on the on the no, podcast you, you just had a baby i know i know but no it's just in, i love your enthusiasm in your podcast but yeah so I, I don't know what to do with it i mean i've written quite a lot already um it can be better you know the writing could be better i'm wondering where to start again i don't know what to do what do you think i've got the material i know i've got a good material i know i've got good stuff unique stuff I think it sounds great. I mean, I would definitely read this. And I, I heard you say, I don't know if I'm the person to tell this story. It's your story. So you're absolutely the person. I want to hear about the Elton John parties and all of that stuff and the rock and like, I think we all do, whether it's told as fiction or as, you know, slightly fiction. I love that based on a real story. That's like my favorite tagline for any movie or book, like based on something real it always makes it sexy and cool and exciting. Um, but Laura, it kind of sounds like your other clients book that you helped who had a, an incredible amount of stories and you know he hired Laura as the ghostwriter uh, is that correct I'll let Laura speak to this but to p- help put it together in a way that made sense yeah okay. so yeah so it, it did kind of remind me of this and also remind me a little bit of Nancy because she's like run into all these famous people too so the, between the two of you you guys have covered like the entire gamut of famous people um but yeah so Jimmy and actually Jimmy's book also has some overlap with Tamar and Larry's story too. It seems, it sounds like, cause his is, his is literally from birth to now telling his story and his journey, um, addiction, abuse, homelessness. And now he has a multi, multi million dollar business. He's super passionate about helping his business actually does. Um, I'm not, I'm failing on the words. Um, like if you lose a limb, he, his company builds the limb replacement. What is that called? I, my, in- Would any of us know what that is to be fair? Prosthetics. Yeah. Prosthetic. Prosthetic. Oh, thank you. Prosthetics. Prosthetics. Yes. Thank yeah. you. My brain is mommy brain. <laughs> my, mommy brain. Yeah, mommy yeah. brain. Mine's still mommy brain though. And it's a bit late now, but blame no, me. I, I get it. I get brain. it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, prosthetics. So he has an orthopedic and prosthetics company and, and his book was very personal, very dark at times, but he's a very positive 
person too. So I don't, it was just a fascinating book, but he also was in Las Vegas and was doing, he was like a paid to party in Las Vegas before he started his company, kind of in his like, you know, drug darker years. He, um, would take people out and they'd get ushered to the VIP and like free alcohol all over. And so he's got stories of, I, I shouldn't name any names because I can't remember what he told me on phone calls versus what he put in the book at the moment, but big names, like doing cocaine with big names and yeah. lots of crazy stuff. So I can't remember all the stuff he put in there, but um, psychologically we humans we, that's why reality TV, even if we know it's not hundred percent real, we can't look away. Like we are so interested in other people and it, do, it doesn't only matter about like the quote unquote famous people. We're interested in like whatever our neighbor is up to. Like, you know, I find myself, if I hear like something like, Oh, what are they doing? Like, are they having a picnic out there? We're just fascinated by other people. So yeah, I think there's so many, so many who would be fascinated to hear your stories not just about the famous people, but also just your interpretation of things and your journey and from doing modeling to having kids and everything in between. So I would totally read that. <laughs> did, did, did your, um, did this guy, Jimmy Colson, did he name names or was everyone like Elton John became sort of neutron bomb or something? I don't know. Did they, did he, did he kind of do all names have been changed slightly? I'm forgetting to be honest, because we worked on it two ish years, a year and a half ago, and I've had a baby since then, which has replaced so many of my my details, memories of just like keeping him alive at this point. They should just give us a frontal lobotomy or throw the brain away <laughs> with the placenta, really, shouldn't they? Because <laughs> it definitely yeah. changed you. <laughs> I, mean, I can tell yeah. you that we did change some names especially like about family members or even friends. So there's a story that he shares about a friend that was found dead in his apartment. That's serious. Um, you have to change a name. For yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. And that friend may have had family connections to. No, well, that's respect. And, I understand. Yeah, oh, so, wow. Okay. I'm that. Yeah. So it could also get, you yeah. know, even crazier. Yeah. So there, we absolutely changed many names. Uh, some are the same. And he reached out to people and was like, Hey, I'm writing this book about my story. I'm going to talk about us. Do you want me to change your name, the name or not? And some were like, no, it's fine. And some were like, yeah, please do. Or if they didn't write back, we just changed it just to, you know, be careful okay. and be respectful. Um, yeah. And actually his wife is also working on a story and she was also a model and did a lot of stuff with Playboy. And so she's also got quite some interesting I bet stories. She's got some fabulous material. Yeah. yeah. Different and she, market for me. I'm yeah, skinny, no boob type, but you know. <laughs> yeah, hey. yeah, and but yeah. she, I think, is a little bit more conservative than her husband in terms of sharing things. So there's a lot of stuff that she has told me, and she's like, I do not want to name names, and she's like, also, she doesn't really want her story to feel like she's trying to draw the sensationalism from that brand so much. She's well, that's what like, I'm like. I don't want to, I'm not in, if I wanted to sell my story, I could have made a lot of money from it just 30 years ago. It's more that I just think it's interesting now. I'm a bit older. I'm thinking I should really write this, you know, it's fun, but I have no interest in, in being on TV as the girl that went out with so-and-so, you know, I'm, I, I, I could have done that and I'm not interested. I would um, change the names and let people guess and make it fun and yeah. exciting, but never Thank reveal. You. And then you're just like, you can't get in trouble for libel or get it sued or anything yeah. like that. Cause you're like, I never revealed the name, but if you talk about, you know, the, the, the Grammy award-winning singer who always has the post Oscar parties, you know, people are going to know who that is. So you can decide like, I'm going to be real specific about it and call him Eaton Bob yeah. you know, or something. <laughs> <Not Lishman>. <laughs> <laughs> a few names tonight that's cool um thank you um so did you write that as a ghostwriter laura is that what you did for him for jimmy well so he really just dumped it all out like stream of consciousness literally in like one giant paragraph that was just really really long and i went through and cleaned it up so that it was really readable and in places where i was like okay i'm not quite following this story we would either get on a call or he would record some audio so that i knew how to fit it in and so I wouldn't, you know, I would say in a way I go straight, but it's still very much in his voice. And I didn't edit it so hard that it sounded like I told the story. 
I still very much kept it in like his way that he communicates, but I definitely went through and, and quote unquote, cleaned it up just so that someone not him would be able to follow it. Cause you know, you know, your own stories so well that sometimes yeah. Yeah. you're like, Oh you yeah, everyone that. would get this right. Uh, yeah. Larry had to pop off. Yeah. Bye Larry. Or is you're still here tomorrow? Someone had to pop off. Who popped off? Tomorrow, tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. And now Larry might pop off. Okay. Sorry. I saw the little things flashing up. So yeah. So that is definitely a possibility too, that you could work with somebody just to get it all out and have them kind of clean it up, edit it up so that you're yeah. really sure that it makes sense to someone outside of your head too. Cause sometimes we all just get so in our own writing. Yeah. And sometimes you, you read the same thing over and over and you miss the spelling error because it, like, you know, what's supposed to be there. So you just read over it. Like your brain just skips it. So sometimes having other eyes can be helpful in that way. Yeah. And can you, can you do it as a script and submit it to Netflix or is that way, way ambitious? I don't know. Cause mine's very, visual. Why not? it's fabulous locations. It's Milan one minute, Paris next, New York, then it's London, then it's parties and it's backstage. Then it's a beautiful shoot in a studio. It's very visual and fast moving. So I feel it's it's a Netflix myself. I don't know whether it's a book. Well, I wonder I if 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 it if it were a self published book, and then it was getting all this clout and being passed around, and everyone was talking about it. Netflix and HBO might start a bidding war for it, so it might be a better route to write it as a book and then wait for the bidding war to come, or then go and start submitting yourself to the as and have it. You know, they would have someone adapt it as a screenplay, so you don't have to write it as a screenplay rather than go pitch it. I mean, you could do anything you want. I'm just thinking out loud here. No, but- I, I get what you're saying. I, I, I've sort of knew that, you know, but I was trying to sort of skip the hard bit. Which is right the Look, book, anything is honest. possible. If yeah. you have, Maybe you have connections because you know all these people that could get you a Netflix <laughs> pitch meeting, you know? I don't know. Um, but if yeah. it were to become like an underground success story or like all these people are becoming obsessed with this book, then Hollywood will come knocking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's a nice, that's a nice, um, that's a nice dream right now, but I guess I'll just get back to the pen. (laughs) (laughs) And one more idea too, one more idea too, if you're comfortable with video and speaking it, you could do some lives. I would encourage you to do lives because it's super nervous at first, but then you get really comfortable after a few and it's fun and literally just say today, I'm telling you the story of blank and you just speak it out. You describe it out. You share it out take that. Then you take the video, strip off the little audio file. We can show you how to do that if you don't know how. And then you can send it to something like rev.com, the rev.com, trint.com, that's t-r-i-n-t.com. And for pretty darn cheap, they will send you the transcription within like an hour, four hours. I don't know, like the same day, they will send you transcription. And now you can just edit based off of that. If you, and this is, this applies for everybody, not just because of your topic, Hazel, but anyone who feels like they're a little bit more comfortable speaking it out, speak it out, do it on video or have your little phone device walking around when you're walking the dog and just speak out your story, speak out your chapter, have it transcribed. And later that same day, you could then go through and edit it. And some people find that a little bit easier than just staring at a blank screen as well. Oh, thank you. So it's like you're dictating it to somebody who then sends it back as a book. You mean, is that how it works? Yeah. I mean, they won't send it back format it as a book or anything. I don't, I don't want to overpromise, but they'll basically send it back and it'll just be like word for word what you said. And there'll be some little errors because they might misinterpret, you know, you might say Mr. Schmelton Schmon and they like mistype, misspell it or don't capitalize it or whatever. There's, you definitely have to clean it up. It's not perfect, but it can be a great way to get you started. And if you feel like telling the story is a bit more colorful in the way that you could say it out loud. And maybe even as you're seeing comments on Facebook lives, they're like, Oh wait, tell me more about that. And you can be like, Oh, you want to hear more about that? And then you go down a little rabbit hole just based on live feedback that someone might be communicating with you. When you say do some lines, do you mean actually speak it out loud and put it on Facebook? Yeah. Well, that's brave. Or Instagram. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You're very brave girls anyway, already doing this. Um, (laughs) And I, I, you are there, and I liked your haters. What is it? Forgive and delete. I've written that down in big capital. Yes. So you mean, so when I dictate this thing, it's not just for somebody to do it as a transcription. It's like, it's just, it's to actually put it out on Facebook and try yeah. and tantalize people with a bit of interest. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, I what, like a vlog you mean? Yeah. 
And you could even have, you know, like you could think about it maybe in advance too. And like in the description, maybe have a couple of like cliffhangers or, or questions or, and you could even, as you're going through, be like, time out. I'm going to stop the story right there. If you're listening now, what do you think is going to happen? You know, or like, see if yeah. you can get some feedback because you can yeah. always edit that out of the transcription later, but it could be a great way to get some feedback on what people are really interested in. And it might help you jog some memories that you, details that you didn't think of. Thank you. Before. Thank you. That's really net. That's really great. Thank you. Sure. For sure. <laughs> I love the idea, Hazel. I love all of the ideas we've discussed today. Thank you. Everyone here is like really got some really cool stories to share and I can't wait to see all of your published books and or screenplays, movies, TV shows, whatever they end up being. Um, but we are out of town time, you guys. So just real quick, if you want to join us, we're going to make everyone who you know wants to participate a bestseller within 14 weeks. Obviously, you have to do the work and write your book, but Laura and I and a supportive group of individuals will be with you every step of the way. We'll have group coaching for the entire 14 weeks. We'll do hot seats, live Q&As co-working sessions. You can have an accountability um, buddy. You'll have a customized action plan with exactly what you need to do each week so that you can stay up to date with the group. So we're all doing things at the one at the same time. Then we'll stagger our launch date slightly. So each different day of the end of the 14 weeks, you'll be launching a book. And then on that day, we all go and support your book. And then, you know, two days later, we all go and support the other person's book. So you're going to have this supportive launch team happening right with you. So when you launch your book, you've got a tribe that is ready to promote the heck out of it. Right. And so that's how we're going to support each other. You're going to get access to Laura's entire best-selling book accelerator program, which is you're going to take online and then we'll meet um, every two weeks to go over where you're at and what you need to do and all of that. So um, it's a really great program. Obviously, if you need um, a ghostwriter or something like that, we're, we're happy to give recommendations. But that type of thing isn't included, but we'll guide you on every step of the way. You know, okay, you probably need a ghostwriter for this. Okay, here's someone for book design, that type of thing. Um, but it's all going to be really cost effective so that you can DIY it. Um, so we start May 25th. And the official program ends August 28th, but we'll have staggering book dates around that time, um, release dates. So Laura, is there anything else that I'm forgetting before we go? Um, I don't think so, but I, I I guess one other thing I can say too, is I do have a free Facebook group. If everyone, if anyone is like, I'm totally in, but COVID is insane. I just don't have the budget, but I want to get a little bit of help and support too. If you go to copy that pops.com forward slash Facebook, then that'll redirect you to a free Facebook group that I've gotten there. So, um, yeah, that's another just free resource. And, and then the podcast, like Hazel alluded to, it, it origi- I originally started copy that pops way before I had it. Well, not way before, like six, seven months before I had a book. And now I talk about books a lot. So I'm actually wondering, I'm like, is anyone sick of me talking about books yet? I'm like, I gotta keep all the coffee topics mixed in, but I am not sick of hearing about books. Laura. <laughs> I never will be. That's good. <laughs> I don't think any of us will. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, and then if anyone has questions to hear in the replay or now that we didn't get to, if you're on the call, then um, yeah, ping us in the free Facebook group. That would be amazing yeah. because then other people can also learn from your question. And if you're like really too shy, then shoot us back an email and, and we can point you in the right direction because we're definitely, we're not those sleazy bro douche marketers that I, I like to make fun of now. Like we really, truly care about helping. So we, we'd love to help in any way that we can. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask one more thing? Sorry. I don't know whether you can hear me. Um, yeah, go ahead. Can I ask, um, what's the difference? Do you believe in self-publishing or, or, or sort of more mainstream publishing or how, do, what are both good or how does it, what are your feelings? I personally had a publishing deal and I felt very taken advantage of. I didn't get a um, advance. And then they wanted me, once they gave me the publishing deal, they wanted me to buy their $15,000 marketing package, all these things. They were trying to upsell me. So I got a bad taste in my mouth. So I let that contract that I had for another book run out. And in the meantime, I self-published this book as an experiment and it was the best experience ever. So now because of my experience personally, I am much more privy to the self-publishing because I do enjoy the mark, the entire process. Um, but I still think that, you know, if you've got a good deal, then absolutely 
go for it. If you have a way to do that, you know, send in your proposal. But for me, I, I don't think I ever will. Um, and I also think unless you're Stephen King or someone with a track record of selling books, they're not, you're not their first priority. And so for me, I didn't feel like a priority. I felt like I was just being used. <laughs> and so that's my yeah, personal opinion. And of course I can't speak to every publisher and you may, because of your story and your celebrity connections, be able to get a totally different deal. And if so, and it works for you, go for it. But I'm all about self-publishing. Um, Laura, what about right. you? Yeah, I would echo exactly what you said. I'm all about self-publishing. And I think a lot of, of what used to be great deals for publishers is dwindling more and more and more because it is kind of like a, it's an industry that's, that's changing and getting sort of eaten up, you know, like the self-publishing world stuff is getting eaten from it. So it's not what it was in the past. And actually there's a really great podcast. If you listen to Tim Ferriss interview Nick Kokonis, I think is, the, and he just got, came on a second time, but his first one, I, I think it's with Nick Kokonis. He is, uh, he used to be like a, a trader on the New York stock exchange floor and like high yield invest. I don't know, like crazy investment, really interesting stuff. And then he partnered with a, a professional chef and they opened up, um, a linea, I think it's called, and it's in Chicago. It's been rated by all of the places like James Beard, James Beard or whatever, like all the awards, it's been named like best restaurant on the, in the world multiple times, whatever. So it's like insane restaurant. And they've opened like 20 other like really unique restaurants. So Tim Ferriss interviewed him uh, a couple months ago and they talked about book publishing. I need to like clip that part and just share it. I don't know what the legalities are, but it is so good because Nick Kokonis talks about how he wanted to do a cookbook and he wanted it to be very high end, gorgeous, huge photos and like kind of a unique physical experience. And so he like got approached by um, publishers to do the deal. And so he wrote up a proposal and then other people um, sent him some offers and he kind of saw how they were very similar in their offers. And he was like, what's going on in this industry that I know, I don't know. So he, he's just one of those people that dives deep into stuff to really understand the mechanics and the, and the workings behind. And so he dove really deep into it and he realized that they, he kind of made book publishers. He made it as an analogy to VCs for companies where a VC for a company does not actually truly care about your company succeeding. They care about the portfolio of companies succeeding. So if they have 10 companies in their portfolio and nine go out of business, but one is a unicorn, they're happy as yeah. can be, but those nine companies are sad and, and, and feeling horrible. So he said, book publishers are very similar. They give deals to lots of different people. And if nine of those 10 books just fall on their faces and sell zero, it's fine if they have got one that just takes off and is great. So the interests are not aligned necessarily between the publishers and the authors. So anyway, he says it far better than I could summarize it and goes into some more detail about his experience with that. But I think that that's a good analogy kind of at least take into consideration if you're looking into those deals. Um, one other thing I can say is with the publishers, they need to really be bringing a lot to the table for it to be worth it for you because here are some drawbacks with a publisher. It's going to take you way longer. So if I want to publish a book next weekend, I literally can. With a book publisher, it's going to take 12, 18 months, two years. Some of these things just, you know, back and forth and they have to go through all these things. I don't know. They, they just drag it out like crazy. And then also they have more control over it. So I've heard people who say, I wanted to call it something different. Or I wanted a different cover. And they were like, nope, it needs to be this direction. Um, and then also they're taking a cut of the royalties. So there are some drawbacks to it versus self-publishing. So you just really need to analyze all the details and make sure it works for your intended purposes. Thank yes. you. You've both been fantastic. I'm very impressed. <laughs> sure. Great girls. Girl power. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm going to look at your 12 week course as well. Your, your 14 week course. Good, good. Yeah. yeah. That'd be amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. And, and the gentlemen, any other last parting questions or thoughts as we wrap up? Well, thanks, everyone.
Great God. It was Thank so you. good to connect voice to voice yeah, and face to face with you all. Thank you so much. <laughs> Our pleasure. Have a great rest of the weekend. Cheers to Bye. the weekend. Bye. 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 Yeah. Sunny London. Bye, get girls. Some, Thank get you. some wine. I'll read the food deal. <laughs> yeah, I need one now. Thanks. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed hearing from all these awesome entrepreneurs and from Allison and myself. And I've got in the show notes link outs to things that we talked about in particular that Tim Ferriss and Nick Kakonis podcast. It's a really great one. And I found some timestamps where they talk about how the book publishing industry is not as amazing as maybe you've been led to believe. So at about two and a half hours in, give or take, and I've got timestamps in the show notes, you can really hear how they break it all down. It, it's fascinating, something that I couldn't explain as well as they did. So I'd encourage you to listen to that if you're interested. And then the links, other links I mentioned, the free Facebook group for authors, come and join us at copythatpops.com forward slash Facebook. And of course, if you want to jump into that 14 week group program, we are starting very, very soon. Copy that pops.com forward slash 14 weeks. And if you are a past client of mine, then send me a quick email because you get a crazy super discount even off of that already amazing COVID-19 pricing deal because you've already gone through things with me. So we want to offer you also an incredible discount to jump in and work on a second, third, fourth, or whatever book, whatever number you're on. All right. Well, until next time, keep on finding ways to write copy that pops. Thanks so much for listening. Let's keep the conversation going. You can find more at copythatpops.com and I'm at Laptop Laura on all the socials. Sometimes we fall.